Now, I try not to get particularly hyperbolic when it comes to recruiting, especially in the month of April. Uh, obviously, we had a show the other day where I got a little bit more just kind of fevered about it. And it makes sense kind of given everything. I understand uh, there's Michigan fans that are concerned. Uh, it's fueled a little bit by Buckeye fans posting their number one class in Michigan down in the 50s. Uh, but at the same time, there there's a lot of reasons not to get too overly concerned. But I still do have concerns. So do you. That's why we are uh, we're doing the Michigan mailbag actually on the correct day for once. And a lot of your questions are about recruiting. So let's get into it on this episode of the Michigan Mailbag on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Thursday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I am your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire. Through USA Today Sports Media Group, without further ado, let's get right to the leaders and best, James Crudup at James Crudup 6. It may have been brought up before, but why aren't you Why aren't you all in the media allowed to watch certain portions of practices? Have they given you all a legit reason, or what do you believe is the reason? Is, it, is that a coach or an AD thing at Michigan? It's 100% not an athletic uh, department thing. And yes, if you look around other programs, Michigan State, Ohio State, their media get to watch some practices. Now, keeping in mind that I only started covering Michigan in the Jim Harbaugh era, it to kind of, I believe, started then. I think that there was, in the Rich Rod and Brady Hoke, I could be wrong, some of, uh, ability to watch practice. But uh, currently, with the Shrone Moore of it all, it is just a kind of a carryover from the Jim Harbaugh of it all. So that's why they don't really say, they just kind of shrug and whatever. Uh, Tony Garcia from the Detroit Free Press has been making a stink on it uh, on social media. Uh, but uh, the way I look at it is it just is what it is. It is what it's been. Michigan's secretive. It's been Fort Schembechler forever. I'm sure that they weren't allowed to watch practice in the Bo Schembechler era uh, or, the, you know, Lloyd Carr and all that. I don't know if they were or not. But uh, it's the world I'm used to, so I don't really care that much. Right? I, I don't feel like... I feel like sometimes it's hard enough to glean something when like there have been times where I've found it to be really beneficial practice to be able to see practice uh, in the bowl games because we get to see, you know, the first 15 minutes or so, which is mostly stretching. Uh, But like this last year, you know, getting to not only see two, but three by the third one, I'm like, I got nothing right. Like there's really nothing that's really, really able to get out of this at this point. I don't care that much, to be honest. My brother, Metal Michael Wolf at MWolf21, how does the season have to go for it to be considered a successful, uh, for it to be considered successful for Sharon's first season? Um, obviously, a winning record. Uh, I, I would say they have to be north of 8-4. and 9-3 and three or 10-2 and two would be very good. Obviously, better than that would be even better. We'll get into kind of some of those uh, dynamic things. I, certainly, people aren't going to be happy. If you beat Ohio State and or one of the other big ones, Oregon, Texas, I think that you're in pretty good position. It's a brutal schedule this year compared to the last couple. Like if it was last year, then like 10 and two is probably the minimum. Uh, this year, it, it's a little bit different. Uh, you hope, I'd say nine and three because you, you got it, m- maybe even 10 and two because you've got to, you've got to show you can still, you can beat some of the top teams coming off of a national championship. But um, it, it, I think as long as they're competitive, right? Like it, if it's, if they lose three games in the regular season, but they're like losing by a score, then that's one thing compared to losing uh, two games and getting blown out in two games, right? So fielding a competitive team is part of it, right? 2019 wasn't fun. Uh, why? Because they weren't competitive in a couple of the games. You know, Wisconsin, they just got blown out. That's not, not a good look. Doesn't feel like things are moving in the right direction. So that would be that. Uh, Jimmy Whitner at Jimmy Whitner one. How many running backs are we taking this year? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it could be, you know, could be just one. It could be two. Obviously, they took two last year, even though I forget about Micah Capana. Um, but, uh, hey, if Jordan Davison and uh, uh, Marquis, whatever, <laughs> I forget his last name every time. If they decide that they both want to come to Michigan, I mean, you're not going to turn them both away. You know what I mean? Uh, I, th- I think you really only need one. That room is kind of loaded. Um, well, you might need two because you might lose both Donovan and Kalel. 
So yeah, I guess maybe two would be a good one. I don't I don't know how many they're going to. Number two, over under five stars this year. Um, I'll set the over under at point zero uh, point five really. I mean they haven't gotten a five star since Will Johnson. So let's set it at point five. Uh, number three, do you think women's basketball makes the tournament next year? Uh, I don't know the roster and who they lose. I know they lost a transfer. I'll, I'll go ahead and say yes, but I don't. I that's just a pure guess. Uh, number four, how's Zuri? Well, she's good. She's being kind of a toddler lately. Uh, today I went and got my hair cut, and then uh, went out with Sarah for for dinner, and I'll walk around Milford, and uh, she uh, she's. It's funny because when I came back from the haircut, she's like, where have you been all day? And I came home just now and she's like, oh, I don't care. But she, so she's acting kind of uh, a mixture of needy and, uh, and apathetic, I guess. Uh, Jonathan Joseph at jjoseph2156. Do you follow Michigan in any other sport? I've been getting really into the lacrosse team. Not as of current, really, no. Um, I mean, I'll pay a little attention. Like I paid some attention to hockey. Uh, I watched a bit of the the Frozen Four. I watched a bit of the game before that. Um, I, uh, but uh, other than that, really, no. I've had years where I followed softball and baseball, uh, but uh, generally, it's it's football and basketball is what pays the bills. And um, it's I then with that in mind, I care about football and intermittently care about basketball. It's funny because this is something I don't know if I've said on the show. Football, I've learned to not be a fan, but sometimes I actually am like a fan of basketball. Like I will sometimes when they lose, like especially if they're good, I like have like a legitimate gut punch feel that I don't get in football. I don't know why, because you all know I tend to not care that much about basketball. We don't talk that much about it, but I take the losses in basketball so much harder than I do football for whatever reason. And it's been that way for years. I don't get it. Spencer Whitmore at Spencer Whitmore finishing us out in segment one. First, I hope your back is feeling better. Thank you. It is much better. Still, the hip is still a little bit sore, but the back is generally much better. Um, seeing a chiropractor has been helping. Second, there are no Ubers in Ann Arbor at 3 a.m. In all seriousness, hope those guys get the help they need. Uh, regarding in agreed, by the way, regarding in game coverage, you prefer sideline or press boxes to cover the game? It, it's hands down the sidelines. I sat in the press box for all of 2020. That was fine, right? Because, you know, I was one of seven people that got to go on the road for the uh, the three games that Michigan went on the road for, Minnesota, um, Rutgers, and uh, Indiana. And uh, obviously there was a bigger contingent at the big house. And that's fine because it was like, all right, it's later in the year. It's already cold. I don't really want to be outside. This is just what it is. Uh, but then I sat up in the press box for two games in 2021, and that sucked. Ohio State and uh, and Washington probably was beneficial to be up in the press box because I kind of was able to get a better feel for the game or how the game was actually going from up there. But generally, I feel like I just I get a better handle on things down in the field. Now, it might take me a game or two. So it's like I'm going into the spring game in a couple of days. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to glean like until I kind of like digest it and think about it. So uh, or even rewatch it. Sometimes that's the case. But yes, I prefer by far being down in the field. All right, we're going to continue on. We've got the uh, the Victor's Valiant and the Blue Crew coming up here in just a moment. Before we get to that, wouldn't it be great if you could see all your investment and retirement accounts in one place? Well, with Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to attend uh, to with your entire portfolio in confidence, with confidence, rather. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all of the tools and the data you need in one place. They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for an unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments, a comprehensive perspective is what sets it apart with great investors, or rather it sets apart great investors. And it's how Yahoo Finance ensures that you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. With a community 
uh, of over 90 million users each month, the Real Strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor. That's yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. All right, continuing on. I know we're at a later hour. <laughs> Sometimes these get later and later. Um, time management's not always great. <laughs> but um, nonetheless, um, I had some important uh, phone calls uh, with some people you know, just to kind of get the lay of the land on some stuff, maybe help us answer some of these, uh, some of these questions here. But um, nonetheless, let's continue on here with the, uh, and Patrick Barron is texting me right now. My nemesis, he's getting... Uh, He's, he, he, he's noting that we just all got the media email about the spring game. Now, he wasn't originally going to be allowed at the spring game, but uh, because he's been obligated to wear his barriers everywhere, we're going to let him. He's not going to do it, but he's, he's, he's supposed to. <laughs> A lot of you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. That's fine. All right, the uh, Victor's Valley and starting off with, uh, I'm not the one at William Cawthor 9. Do you think not having uh, the depth on defense will hurt us in closer games? You don't know if they don't have the depth on defense, right? Like, how, how many of you are going into the, the, the next year, this upcoming year, thinking like, okay, you've got Josh Wallace as a starting quarterback. He, he wasn't even on the team yet. Uh, you weren't sitting there saying like, yeah, I know for sure Michael Barrett's going to be like that, that dude, right? You thought, uh, yeah, he's taking a big step forward, but it, you were looking at Junior Colson and Ernest Houseman kind of as more the, being the duo than... Barrett and uh, Colson, you weren't thinking as much about Keon Sab uh, or Quentin Johnson, right? Um, I was one of the few that was talking about Kenneth Grant, but a lot of people weren't really talking about Kenneth Grant this time last year. So uh, you don't know that they don't have the depth. Uh, we'll we'll kind of get a little bit of an idea on Saturday, and we'll continue to get an idea once the season starts, right? Like depth is built between now and then. Uh, I, there's a lot of guys defensively that I think really could be, you know, you look at Zeke Barry, you look at um, a, you know, Jimmy Roller, a Jaden Hood, you look at, you know, uh, you look at a TJ guy. I think that they might have the depth, but we don't know for sure. Uh, where does the term 30,000 foot view come from? Uh, I'm assuming you just kind of mean like the general term. Uh, it, it, it just comes from the idea. It's like, you know, when you're in an airplane, you're 30,000 feet above, you can kind of see everything. So it's the idea that, like, you can see everything, um, that you're not just, you know, if, if I'm looking at my house, you know, at my house, I might not know that th there's a big something going on in the neighborhood, but you get up in the air, you kind of get a better aerial view, and that's kind of where it comes from. Uh, I think that's what you're asking. I hope that I answered your question there. I'm hoping I'm, that's not pedantic. Uh, how are you and your family? Uh, we're good, as far as I know. <laughs> Uh, I don't see a lot of my family, right? Like I'm a single, I mean, I have a Sarah, but, uh, uh, uh you know, I'm, I'm not married and I've got a Zuri who's over there pitter pattering around right now, sounding like she might come in here, but maybe not. And, uh, I saw my mom for her birthday. We went to, uh, Joe Satchery. Well, her birthday was actually a week and a half ago, but, uh, we went, uh, for a birthday present as I got her tickets to Joe Satriani and Steve Vai. And uh, so we went and saw them at the Fisher Theater and uh, we spent some time together. My grandma's in Florida right now. She lives a mile away from me otherwise. So I haven't really seen anyone in my family other than that. But we're good as far as I know. <laughs> so James Kovalevsky at Coach underscore Kovo. Uh, what are some impacts you foresee with the Big Ten not having divisions in the 2024 season? Are you looking forward to divisionless play? Honestly, I just haven't thought about it. Um, so... I don't know, right? Like, I don't, especially with Michigan not playing Penn State, that makes me kind of wonder. But, like, I, I think it's it's kind of like the playoff. It'll all fig Everything will figure itself out. But, obviously, like, a close loss or, like, you know, what, you know, you might have, you know, you could have a one loss uh, or even a two loss. I mean, you, uh, it won't be quite the same as, like, if the West would have beaten the East. But, I mean, if everyone beats up on each other, who knows, like, how does someone get to the Big Ten championship game? Uh, how does uh, it work with the winner? Where do they get seated? All that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's just a whole new world. I'm 
I'm kind of more so not thinking about it and just going to let it happen. And or once we kind of start seeing how everything shakes out, then I'll kind of get to it. Right. Um, as far as looking forward to divisionless play, not really. I kind of liked how it was, to be honest. Maybe it's because I was used to uh, Michigan making the Big Ten championship and just steamrolling whoever, but it would probably be a lot more bet more of a fun game if it's, you know, hopefully not Michigan, Ohio state again, but it could be Michigan, Penn state could be Michigan, Oregon could be, you know, and any number of teams. It just sucks that Michigan plays mo- all, but one of the really good teams in the conference really. Uh, so that part sucks, but maybe they get to, to play Penn state. Who knows? That'd be cool. Um, Jacob Shavaria at Shavaria. What do you predict will happen with a catapult hacking? Any truth? Ryan day having our practice footage. I don't know for certain, but that's what I've been told. And I've been told Michigan believes that from people inside of Michigan. As far as what what I predict will happen, I don't know, right? Someone's got to be able to, you had at least the preliminary, like with Rose Bowl and it's like, oh, well, Alabama's not using their iPads. And everyone's like, oh, well, Michigan's at it again. It turned out Michigan's not using theirs either for the same reason. And, uh, and Dan Wetzel has a whole thing and says this is not stemming back to Michigan. All of that stuff. I It makes me think like, okay, that maybe the people were still working on it. Obviously, it would be a bombshell. I just don't know like when you're telegraphing what the story is, if you're going to be able to get everything you need. Now, do I believe that Ohio State was doing that? Yes, because I have, this is from multiple, this is not the way that I could report it, right? But... <laughs> Bear with me here. A former Ohio State player transferred to another team. Someone who is at Michigan's cousin works for that team and asked, is, is, is this film, did you guys have other film, you know, other teams film on your iPads? And they said 100%. And then that got relayed back. But someone's got to go on record if that's the case. And I don't know that anyone will. That's so I take it for what it's worth. That's just what I, I know. There's going to people that, that, that slam me for this is probably one of those stupid things that gets made into a graphic. And I don't really love that, but it's just what I was told. So, um, whether that's a hundred percent true or not, I have no way to actually tell you that. Um, but I'm sure there's still people digging does anything come out of it? I don't know. We're, we're kind of down the road. Uh, does that make things maybe easier or harder to, for the people who are digging on that? Like, I know that, you know, one person's no longer at the outlet. Uh, the, the, one of the people that was digging on this, no longer at that outlet anymore. So, um, I don't know that they have the power of that outlet. Um, one of the other people that I was talking to that was digging on this stuff that I haven't talked to since, December. Um, I haven't heard anything really from the, about the athletic or Wetzel, uh, what they're doing. I know they were looking into all of this stuff. I know that they, some of the people I talked to that were working on it were fully believed that that was the case, but just is what it is at this point. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not trying to defame. (laughs) I'm just saying what I've been told behind the scenes. Uh, John Diadamo at John Diadamo. Take your pick. Not joking here. Will there be increased Uber Lyft partnerships due to the recent coaching off the field issues? I, you hope so. I'm going to say probably not. Number two has been merging as a starting quarterback. Uh, I would say Alex Orgy, but I, again, long way to go. A good showing in the spring game would go a long way. And it could be Jack Tuttle because he hasn't been playing. But, I mean, he's a former four-star. Uh, Jake Butt pointed out to me earlier today that uh, Tuttle played behind two NFL quarterbacks, right? Like he was behind uh, Michael Penix Jr. And then he comes to Michigan and he's behind, uh, and he's behind JJ McCarthy. So maybe he gets his opportunity and it works out better. So he might be better than people think. Uh, number three, what should we expect to see Saturday? I don't really know. <laughs> That's the beauty of it, right? This isn't, this is the team versus itself with makeup of, I'm not really sure, the maze team versus the blue team. Probably you'll you expect to see the defense be better than the offense because that's just how that works. Um, but uh, I, I don't really know. It, that, that's the beauty of the Michigan spring game. That there's, I don't go into it with any expectations. You want the expect everything to reveal itself to you. 
essentially. Uh, Anton Tasmita Mangala asked Tasmita Mangala, excited for the spring game. I'll be there Saturday. What questions, if any, will be answered by what you see at the game? Uh, one would be if uh, we see Alex Orgy making smart decisions, making the routine play, making the smart play, um, that would that could answer some questions. Um, conversely, seeing someone like DJ Waller really like being locked down would be something. Um, seeing you know Edda moving across the line and particularly being able to generate pressure would be something. But I, I, I take everything with a grain of salt somewhat in the spring game, right? Because you see like a Peyton O'Leary dominate last year. You see, uh, Brandon Peters have a pretty good spring game in 2017. Uh, you, it's sometimes you see a guy really shine in the spring game, only to kind of disappear once the season comes. So it doesn't really answer a ton, but you want to kind of see things that you've heard confirmed. I think that's the better thing. Uh, Perry Mitchell at Perry Mitchell 08. What kind of season do you envision for Dono coming off of his less than stellar 2023? He seems refocused and re-energized, and I feel like he may have to carry the offense some weeks until they can get they can fully gel as a unit. Uh, hard to really say um, what I, you know, I would expect somewhat of a return to normalcy. Um, I think that he was a little too overconfident going into last year. And when other teams really like honed in to stop the run, then I mean, here's the issue that Michigan might face. Teams may still do that, especially if Michigan, like we need to prove that we can pass the ball. I don't know that Michigan has the capability of passing the ball like they did last year. Right. So. What does that end up looking like? Well, you hope that you they use Donovan smartly then, move him outside and you know, do a bunch of different things with them, use some misdirection, all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. That that just as much as uh he's important, the pass game being able to not make the offense one dimensional is another aspect that will help determine his success or lack thereof, I would say. Brett Byer, Brett Byer, six bit worried about how recruiting's been going. Any intel on recruits that we have? Uh, see, now we finally get to the recruiting. I open up saying it's all recruiting. We got none until now. Uh, I'm a bit worried about how recruiting's been going. Any intel on recruits that we have a more than a likely chance of landing real soon? Will probation hurt recruiting in the next few years? Uh, I, I don't know that probation's really going to hurt recruiting, to be honest. Um, I know they had some recruiting restrictions that have not been revealed. I don't think it's going to be much of anything. Um, as far as the uh, recruits, I mean, keep your eye on Elijah Melendez. Keep your eye on uh, Taz Williams and maybe someone that is I'm not thinking of at the moment. Is the, those would be the ones that I have my eyes on at the moment. Avery Gatch as well. Avery Gatch, almost forgot about him. Uh, the Regan Raider at Hamstand 87, what's your expectation for the season? Mine is 10-2 and two or 9-3. and three. I think you're right about on there that's about what i have right like they could be eight and four as well again if they don't have a quarterback eight and four seven and five uh but if if they get above average quarterback play it could be 11 and one 10 and two i'm probably not going to predict anything better than 11 and one no matter how good things look uh just based off the schedule this year djn at May's rage 86 will there be alcohol at the big house saturday will that begin this fall i don't know to be honest also any info on why some of the young transfers left when opportunities were presented like carmelo english um, I mean, there weren't a lot, right? Like, Carmelo English was kind of the only, like, surprise. Keon Sab, I mean, you can kind of figure out that it was, you know, Rod Moore was healthy at the time, playing time, wanting to start, uh, being aggressively pursued by Alabama. All that kind of stuff probably played a factor. Carmelo being a Southern guy as well from Alabama, maybe he just looked around and said, like, I just don't like being here. It didn't really fit in. Maybe didn't feel the culture. Maybe didn't feel the scheme. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Uh, but um, he's, those are really the only ones. Um, we'll get to Christian Dixon here momentarily. Uh, Adam Casel, at Adam underscore Casel, uh, quarterback and wide receiver be, uh, seem to be the biggest questions on the team, uh, and we'll get the most attention on Saturday. What other groups or players will you be paying close attention to? Honestly, some of the strengths, I'll be really looking at the, uh, at the defensive line um, just to see like how, you know, and the offensive line, because you want to see how those two per- particularly do. Uh, tight end as well, just for the sake of like, they're going to have to probably rely heavily on Colston Loveland and Marlon Klein. Hearing some good things about Marlon Klein. Finishing us out in segment two, Clark at Blue for Life 8, whose recruiting class will be better in year one as head coach? Sharon Moore, Dusty Mays, transfers included. Um, it's a hard question because neither have landed a recruit yet, so it's hard to tell who's going to be better. Uh, I'm going to go with Sharon Moore because, I mean, he's got a little bit more momentum. 
I, I understand they haven't gotten anything really going yet, but I mean, it's, yeah, I, I just feel like he's, he's a voracious recruiter They're coming off a national championship. I know hasn't paid any dividends yet. I think NIL is a little bit better of an, e- an easier pitch on, in football than it is basketball. So that's who I'm going to go with. All right, we're going to continue on. We are running out of time. We're going to continue on, though, here in just a moment with the Blue Crew. Before we do, I've been told I am a competitive person, depending on the scenario. Do you think that is true? I don't know if you do or not. <laughs> all right, well, I've got a competitive side, and we all do. And uh, my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play not one, not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. The best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like the classic Monopoly, but I can also heist their vaults of riches for myself, but beware, they can do the same to you. And now the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. Now it's one of my favorite games, and it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can actually team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. All right, for the risk of going uh, 40 minutes, <laughs> we're going to... Lightning round, the final segment, the Blue Crew, as we normally do. William Wiegesend at W Wiegesend. I hope I'm saying that right. Probably not. Mom at Satriani. Yeah, yeah, that's right. My mom is a huge, my mom's a guitarist. So I uh, grew up on Hendrix and that she said to me on the ride home from Satriani, like, she's like, I didn't think I would ever like someone as much as Jimi Hendrix, but Joe Satriani. Yeah. So she had a great time. I did too. Question, what are the recruiting restrictions exactly from Burger Gate? I have no idea. I think part of it was they couldn't announce uh, the signees. That's a weird restriction, but it was what it was. So uh, I have no idea other than that. The Angry Pigskin at uh, Big Team Rivalry. Any news on how the O-line is progressing? So they might be looking at bringing in a transfer or two to flesh things out a bit. I mean, they're always looking at who can help them. As far as I know, the offensive line's looking pretty good. Uh, that it's uh, it's doing pretty good. Um I mean, we've heard a lot about Miles Hinton, Josh Preeb, Giovanni Elhadi, uh, and uh, I haven't really heard as much about Greg Kirpin or Andrew Gentry, but I, I think they're in good position. I've heard good things. So uh, if they add anyone, it's probably just more like we, we like where we're at. We can get better. It's kind of like adding either Olu or, uh, or uh, Drake Nugent or any of the guys they added last year, right? They didn't need to. Their offensive line was in a fine position, and they added anyway. So adding position, adding strength to position of strength. Um, like I'm hoping they'll do with CJ West. I think that that would be a really good move. Terry at Daddy Fit 50. How soon is Michigan going to get some actual football commits? Oh, hopefully this weekend you see something, right? Um, but uh, obviously it took a little while getting the staff co- uh, coalesced. So um, you hope, hope that they get something going in the next week or two. Uh, that would probably be a smart time. Edwin Simmons at Simmons underscore Edwin. Will we lose any QB to the portal? I mean, anything's possible. I haven't heard any rumblings of anybody at this point. Why do people feel the team down south have a better return defense, even with the kid from Bama? Um, they, they've been on the ascent, and they brought pretty much everybody back, and, have, and then they add whoever they've added. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, let, let's be honest. It's, it's a very good defense. Yeah, Michigan put 30 on them last year. It's still a very good defense. So uh, I, I still think it, it, it may, is it better than Michigan's? I don't know, but I would call it a draw at this point because at least Ohio State has more depth that we know of at the moment. Julian Pikat, alone underscore centrist. What is with, what's up with the wide receiver room? We just lost a lot of four star to the transfer portal. I mean, Christian Dixon was a four star, but he never, I don't know unless you're talking about Carmelo English, another four star, but. Christian Dixon didn't really ever play. He never really matriculated. So it is what it is. Uh, Tyler Martoya at TMart underscore 116. Is Michigan going to go after QB in the portal or are they comfortable with Orgy based on what they've seen? Um, I think that they'll see what's available in the portal, right? Like you're going to upgrade a position if you can. They might roll with Orgy and Tuttle. I don't know if they will or not. But spring game is going to be part of that. Who goes into the portal uh, outside of Michigan will also play a role in that. 
DE Wolverine at KMOS underscore 11. Are there any serious targets for the wide receiver position from the portal? Kyle Ford would be one of them. He uh, put Michigan in his top group. Uh, but other than that, um, I know there's the Colorado State guy, but uh, it didn't look like he necessarily was looking at Michigan yet either. Uh, jobs finished Natty Champions at MGO Blue BA. Best guess basketball commits. I could not tell you, and I have been very open on this show for years now, that I do not follow basketball recruiting in the least. Never have, probably never will. Uh, Josh Porter at JPZ5. Where are all the receivers leaving? I, I, they lost. Oh God, okay, so I guess they have lost four. <laughs> I was going to say they lost two. They've lost two recently. I mean, Darius Clemens is a, is a blow. They they uh you can consider a Marion Walker receiver a DB. I don't know. I I don't really have a good answer, but Michigan's not exactly been a recruiting um or not a recruiting a, a wide receiver happy offense as of yet. But I mean, if Roman Wilson and and Cornelius Johnson both get drafted, they both should, especially if uh, one or the other gets drafted early. That will help. You're right, because then you can go to and be like, look. We, you can still get you to the league. They need to be able to do that, right? Ohio State can be like, we're going to put you in the first round if all things work out. Michigan needs to be able to get at least close to that. Rowan Wilson, second round, that would be very helpful for them. Uh, Justin Jordan at Justin 2, Jordan 3. Why is recruiting so slow around the best three-year run in history? NIL cannot be the only factor here. It's a pretty big factor, honestly. It's, it's a pretty big factor. Because it's not just Michigan's NIL, it's everyone else's NIL. If all, if, if all things are equal and one school is saying, like, you commit here, we're going to give you this right here, right now. And Michigan's like, you commit here in a year or two, if everything goes well, then you can get that same amount. Guess what's the, uh, the easy choice? So it's a pretty, pretty big part of it, to be honest. Um... Cole, at probably Cole, do you think we'll be adding depth to the receiver room this portal period? I'd imagine so, but curious to see what you're thinking. I think they have to. They have, I forgot, four scholarship receivers because you got uh, the Roddy Bell's little brother as well, switched over from quarterback to wide receiver. Yeah, they, they've got to add. They have to. You cannot go into the season with four scholarship wide receivers. I remember talking to Josh Gaddis uh, before a game, and he's like, man, we need to get like, we need to have like 15-ish wide receivers like our, our room, we had like eight or nine at that time. And I thought they was like, really, you're a pretty good spot. He's like, no, we need like 15. They've got four right now. Yes, they need wide receivers. And you're right at the left two joining in the summer. But four, then up to six. That's not going to cut it. Uh, Jason at Go Blue VA, what's up with this current football class? Is it NIL or negative recruiting or something else? Again, I, I put most of it on NIL, to be honest. And just being in flux, right? They didn't. The coaching staff has officially been set two and a half weeks ago. With Lou Esposito's hire. That's part of it, right? And they got to hit the ground running. You got guys that were all over the place. People want to know who their position coach is going to be. It was a, a late change, right? Like a lot of other schools changed their coaches in December. Michigan changed at the end of January. So that's part of it as well. So I'll add to that. Blue captain at Mays and Blue 360. Came across that Michigan threw Harbaugh under the bus with the latest release of negotiated punishment by the MCAA over Burgergate. Why can't Michigan defend its staff like Tennessee did? And fight back the hypocrisy. The division between the scholars and athletes will always exist at Michigan. Again, I don't know the timing of how that all went down, but I, to me, if if it was any point after Harbaugh left that they were able to kind of extricate the the program and Harbaugh, that's tactical and smart. Now, when it comes to a lot of things, I think that Michigan aired right. Like Michigan, I literally got an administrative people at Michigan telling me like the 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 we're gonna about to go to war kind of stuff that came out of, from this podcast was not me making it up. This, this is what, like, what they were telling me. The things that I was telling you, the opinions I had, were coming directly from people. And then they, as soon as the first sign of adversity hit, they put their tail between their legs, not necessarily the people I was talking to, but the administration as a whole, uh, put their tail between the legs and said, because I know that some of the people I was talking to were really disappointed, but, you know, only, you know, they, you need a consensus. And uh, they, they folded, but it seemed like that they were going to go to, you know, go to the, the, the mattresses. But as far as this Harbaugh extricated from it, he's not with the team anymore. So I don't really care if he ends up being a sacrificial lamb for the NCAA, as long as it's not him, Michigan, getting the brunt of what he was going to get, even though I don't think he was in the wrong when it came to Burgergate. 
Finishing us out, Jay Ritchie at uh, or Ricci at jmish99 in this new transfer portal era. Seems a little unfair, half serious, half joking. It seems like Dusty and Michigan have a nice advantage rebuilding, not complaining. In any case, can you address how the team is shaping up with transfer portal and recruiting? Again, I don't know about recruiting. Probably never will. Uh, I'll be very reactive when it comes to basketball recruiting. There's about 20 guys that seem really interested in uh, in the basketball team by the transfer portal. Just need someone, right? You got all these FAU guys. You got Vlad Golden. You just need someone to drop at some point, right, to start the dominoes falling. And uh, from there, you know, that's how you, you can build. They obviously need to get guys. All right. That's going to do it for us today. We will be back talking about defensive, uh, my defensive depth chart. Go and so that way we can answer some of the depth uh, chart questions um, essentially uh, on Friday. And then we will do a post spring game uh, episode at night. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We'll be back soon. Peace.